Hello, everybody, and hello to my lovely uh, other racers, Amarachan and Arborelia. Hey. Hi. <laughs> and uh, today we're going to be running Metroid Planets, which you'll see very quickly kind of comes over as like a bit of a Metroid maker where people make their own rooms. They get thrown in a generator. It throws in a bunch of items and it shuffles them all up. And then you end up with basically a randomized, completely like randomized, not only in the items are shuffled, but we don't know what rooms are going to be in this. We don't know like what order we're going to see the rooms. We don't even know where we're starting. So it's it's going to be an, a discovery experience for all of us. Uh, and we, we kind of vaguely know what items we're going to get, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So basically it is a completely random Metroid one style word room uh, world, geez, world with some extra things tossed into it. And uh, since our lovely runners here cannot talk to you during this race, because, you know, we'll be racing, we have the lovely gray goo girl uh, doing commentary for us. Hi, y'all. <laughs> so I've said too much already. We'll probably get this going. Is uh, our, our, our other lovely runners on the start game screen? Yep. 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 All right. So we're going to get counted down, and then it's all gray and cell. And then, you know, I trust y'all will do an amazing job. I appreciate both of you. But let's go on go. I'll count down from three. So three, two, one, go. All right, here we go. So I was loading into the first area. This is the landing zone. It's uh, the first room in any of the games. Ship comes down, pop out. Uh, you can come back here for full heals. Uh, just like in any other Metroid game. Uh, so as as uh, Kat had, had alluded to, this is based on uh, the idea of what if Metroid 86, but updated, more clean, um, better animations, uh, but very kind of keeping with the spirit of the original game. So it fills most of that. Uh, there are some additional little things that are added here and there that kind of uh, alter the way that... Um, <laughs> alter the way that the, uh, the game plays. But uh, as you can see, all of our runners right now are heading towards the uh, the left side of the screen. Uh, they're gonna keep looking for just looking for items. It's the main goal of this is to try and find as many items as possible as quickly as possible. Um, they are all pretty familiar with these these room sets. They might not have seen all of them, but they have a general idea of what's in them. Um, and Amada's probably got the most advantage here at having made many of them. Uh, all of the people in this this particular race have made rooms for this, so they're all within the mix, but they don't know which ones specifically they're gonna get. Alright, so we can see that Amada is just going wholesale towards the left, trying to get as far into the seat as possible. Uh, whereas we can see uh, Arborelli and Kat are taking more of a uh, reserved approach, trying to find ways around this particular room. See if maybe there's something in here to find. Typically large rooms tend to have uh, have specific item placement, so... Uh, let's see. Pretty much that's going on. Oh, the, so Amada, Amada has moved on to a room that has... Uh, so, they're not really Yoku blocks, but they kind of represent the idea of Yoku blocks. If you're familiar with uh, Mega Man speedrunning or any of the Mega Man games, those blocks that appear and disappear. While those still remain static, they, they have the appearance of Yoku blocks. Alright, um... You can see everyone's just gone in sort of radically different directions at this point. Um... They're kind of just all spreading out, going their own way. Um... And they're, they're running to the first hazard, so Amato is, is illustrating one of the one of the, the things that is most important at the start of the game, which is finding missiles. Missiles are not the easiest thing to find sometimes. Um, there is one set of missiles, a missile pack, that is generated at the start that is considered a major item. Uh, the difference between major items and minor items are minor items are not really required for progression. This missile pack is considered required because all red doors require five missiles. You can't get further into the seat without having those first five missiles. Uh, we will find by the end of this this race, though, there are going to be a lot of missiles that are found throughout this. Uh, all the minor spots are either filled with key tanks or missiles. So it's sort of yeah. a, uh, it's a matter, we're going to get a lot of, uh, a lot of different, uh, missile packs found throughout the entire thing. They're all still sort of, uh, looking for that first missile pack that's going to be the, the biggest thing to find. Uh, along with Morph, uh, Morph Ball, which opens up a lot of these different rooms. Uh, the major items they're looking for right now that are most important right now, specifically Morph Ball, uh, they want to find um, some type of beam weapon that can make their, their shots more effective. Seeing as this is based on Metroid 89, uh, 86, uh, the weapons are Long Beam, Ice Beam, Wave Beam, 
and they added Spazer from Super Metroid, uh, so that we have uh, sort of a wide beam, as it were, which is what they called it later in the series. Uh, specifically in Dread, it's called wide beam. Their, uh, yeah, their item collection also includes various suit, uh, Spring Ball, which was added again as a homage to Super Metroid, uh, Space Jump, which is another Super Metroid item, uh, Screw Attack, and the regular Morph Bombs. And that really rounds out the entirety of the... Oh, and High Jump, sorry. That rounds out the entirety of the items that they can gather through this run. Most of them are um, in some way going to affect their progression path. And we've seen uh, that Cat has taken a warp back to the ship. Um, assuming that uh, she's missed something along the way, so it's it's a fair assumption. Getting to the end of that that path and finding nothing, you you have to kind of think about what you might have missed along the way. Uh, I will say the logic for this game does not involve uh, damage boosting or infinite bomb jumping. That's kind of an important distinction to make. Um, in a lot of the um, randomizers you'll see for Super Metroid or for any of the other Metroids. Uh, you'll see that uh, damage boosting to get height or to move in certain ways is, is required sometimes, or the use of infinite bomb jumps. But as a uh, way to make this more fair, and because routing that into logic is, is difficult, uh, that is not part of the logical progression set. Yeah, this room that they're looking at right now, Purple Bridge, that is going to contain their first logical progression item. Um, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's hidden in the room somewhere, um, and every time they run past it, they're just running right by that first item. It is underneath the titular purple bridge. Uh, it looks like Arborelia had, had the right idea, but didn't quite make contact with the right spot on the bridge. And it looks like Flamel Cat's the first to find it. Uh, this is going to be their high jump. High jump does exactly what high jump is uh, expected to do. It's going to give you some additional height. It's going to make doing certain jumps way more possible. And uh, it's going to give them access to the area where they're going to find their first missile path. And Cat uh, now has uh, a whole bunch of different places she can go to find uh, any type of progression. Uh, you can see the, the jumps she's doing are just substantially farther, substantially higher. Meanwhile, Arbrelia and uh, Amada are still just searching through the other rooms. These are large rooms. This is part of the uh, part of the possibilities you have when you have uh, large seeds like this. Uh, a lot of a lot of space, a lot of yeah, space for hiding more things. We will see the seed does become a kindness a bit later, and that's when I'll, I'll explain more about some of the other mechanics that were added to this process. And looks like Cat is about to find her missile pack. And looks like she she just barely missed it. That's incredibly unfortunate. Uh, hopefully she'll circle back around. That missile pack is buried inside of that uh, that stalactite stuff. So hopefully, oh, and we see that uh, Amada's also found the high jump boost. Excellent. So yeah, this is this is the core of the game. It's exploration, trying to figure out what you might have missed, where you want to go. Ah, Cat found a different set of missiles that uh, will work just fine for for our purposes. So. Cat having missiles now enables her to do several things, specifically opening red doors like the one she's about to open. Um, although it takes five missile uh, missile contact to open that door, so she ended up hitting a uh, an enemy with one of those missiles. That's why it didn't open. Uh, there are a lot of missile doors in this game, so early on it can be a little difficult. Uh, make sure you've got enough missiles to get through a lot of areas, but as you get more, it becomes less uh, less difficult. More missile packs. You can see a lot of missile packs that are sort of buried throughout the map. Uh, let's talk about minor and major items. I mentioned earlier that there are major items required for progression, and minors are always missiles and E-tanks. There is a distinction in each room where you can say an item that you're placing is always going to be a minor item, or it is always going to be a major... Uh, it'll be, it has the potential to be a major item, but it can also be a minor item. That's how they, they deal with the idea of... Uh, not requiring that major item positions be major items. Um, and that's mostly so that they have the flexibility to add as many items as they need to. If they want to, if the, the map generator wants to insert a room somewhere, it's not stuck putting a major item in there. 
Okay, so Cat is still exploring further up in the map, and we've hit our first hazard room. So, uh, Cat right now is in a room that is doing heat damage, which means that uh, as she takes hits, uh, she's going to continually lose health while she's in that hot space. Uh, this is uh, this is the benefit of the hazards uh, the hazards allowed that was uh, won by the uh, incentive step. Anyways, more people exploring. I mean, uh, we see uh, Amada is now uh, actually got more missiles than Cat. Pulled, pulled ahead, as it were. Uh, right now, Arvrelia is still trying to find the missile pack. Uh, and Cat is entered an area that requires bombs to open. Uh, that won't be acquired until substantially later in the seed. Um, and you can see the runes sort of loop on themselves sometimes. In this case, the uh, the bombs would allow you to go into both either of those entrances or up above. It is not exactly common to not get Morphal relatively early in this, but this particular seed uh, kind of hides Morphal a little bit in some unfortunate places. So we will see uh, we'll see that come to fruition relatively soon. Uh, so, do you have anything you wanna you wanna add? Feel free. Yeah, I was just about to say while our runners are hunting for items, how about I read a couple of donations? Uh, we have twenty five dollars from Beauty and Discovery, our runner of our last game, uh, who says thank you again for the great opportunity to be part of Randathon and raising money for such a fantastic organization as Nami. Shout out to all the people who worked so hard and donated their time to make this marathon happen. And yeah, as a fantastic reminder, we are raising money for Nami, the National Alliance on Mental illness. Millions of people are affected by mental illness every year across the country. Many people, just like you, my dear viewers, work, perform, create, compete, laugh, love, and inspire every day. And it's part of Nami's goal to show those affected that it's okay and that they're not alone. What a fantastic charity cause that we are fundraising for this event. Oh, absolutely, yeah. This, this money is going to be absolutely incredibly helpful. And I'm, I'm quite happy to, to see... Uh how much uh, wonderful charity has happened so far with the uh, current total. Mm. And a quick little reminder that when you do donate, uh, make sure that you scroll down and assign your donation to an incentive. Uh, we have two bid wars currently open, both for Resident Evil Remake, which comes right after this run, and that is to decide if it's going to be a door randomizer or a lock randomizer. And as well, there is a bid war to decide the outfit that Jill, the character that's going to be played, outfit she's going to be wearing uh, right now casual for outfits in the lead and lock randomizers in the lead but not by much so you can easily change that with a quick little donation all right so a few things have happened while we were, while we were chatting there uh amada has found bombs uh the only problem with that is amada doesn't have morph ball so amada can't use bombs until she finds morph ball and uh, that's gonna be a bit further into the siege she's also found spazer which is a really really decent weapon uh for uh usually when you have it combined with other other types of attacks it just shoots three beams instead of uh one uh when you use wave beam it makes two alternating waves um so the big thing they want to find right now is again some more some more um some more beam weapons specifically they want to find long beam so that they can shoot across the entire screen uh wave beams so they can shoot through walls or ice beams so they can freeze metroids that's the most important beam because of the fact that you cannot beat Metroids without Ice Beam in this game. Um, okay here. Yeah, Amada is now moving towards uh, Norfair, which is uh, the next logical progression area. And uh, that's very good for her. It's definitely where you want to go. Um, oh, actually, no, she was in a different spot. Never mind. I was incorrect about that. Uh, she's moving back from Wreck Ship. Um, so there are seven areas in this game. Uh, you start in Criteria, typically it's either Criteria, Brinstar, uh, although we have it set to random, so it could also be in Norfair. Uh, in this case, they've started in Criteria, and they are working their way uh, towards uh, Norfair or Brinstar or Wrecked Ship off of that, that path. So right now we see, again, Arborelia is uh, still looking for her high jump and for her missile packs, uh, while Cat has moved on to... That is in uh, Norfair at this point. So she's gonna grab these two items that are in this room and follow it up with, ideally, if she's if she's lucky, she's gonna pick the right direction out of here. But that's gonna be, yeah, not guaranteed. And she did. She went towards the uh, the room that houses the morph ball. 
Um, it is a very tricky and relatively difficult room to kind of work through, but with Space Jump, it's substantially easier to navigate. Also, what Cat sees right there is uh, an item she definitely wants, uh, which is, uh, <laughs> that is a core. So this game adds a thing called, uh, called cores. Cores allow you to have additional specific uh, functions. So in this case, the core she saw there was the sensor core. It will highlight breakable walls. It will give her an idea as to where there are false walls. It is incredibly useful for speeding up the traversal of this game. So she saw it, she wanted it. She doesn't think she can get it yet, which is why she moved on. And it uh, looks like Amada is heading the same direction Cat went towards Norfair. And uh, yeah, Cat's just exploring more of Norfair. Um, you can see with this room that that elevator only took us part of the way up. So she's using Space Jump to traverse the entirety of the room to see if there's anything special up there. In this case, it is, if I remember correctly, an E tank. Yes. I actually was the person who vetted these seeds, so uh, this is kind of fresh in my mind. I ran them yesterday, so I have uh, some idea. I also have a spoiler map so I can see where everything is, just to kind of keep things easily explained. It looks like uh, Amada has uh, found Norfair. Excellent. Let's see if she gives the uh, little guy room a chance. Mata does have at this point a slightly uh, distinct advantage of having the the spacer, uh, just in the, in terms of combat. Very very important to have that little bit of edge. Um, this room has that particular little feature where if you break one specific block, the entire outline of the little guy, as it were, breaks open, revealing for her the morph ball. Uh, that puts her firmly in the lead. That morph ball is one of the harder things to find in this seed. And it is, uh, yeah, quite quite important for progressing. There's there's no way to finish it without having without having more fall. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go quickly. We're just gonna we're just gonna cover everything that we've done over so far. Right now, Amada Chan has high jump boots, spacer, bombs, and more fall, being the only person to have more fall at this point. Uh, Cat only has bombs and high jump and is currently exploring Norfair. And Arborelia is still looking for her high jump and her uh, first set of missiles. Yep. So it's it's yeah. We're in a we're in a pretty good position right now. Um, Amada is using the bomb she found in wrecked ship, which is incredibly important. Uh, to get that sensor core, uh, she now has the distinct advantage of being able to see every one of the little tricks of these rooms. Uh, there is one room in this that has a fun mechanic that is unexpected and is not detectable by the sensor. Um, it was so undetectable that I had to uh, look at the room yesterday to discern what I was supposed to do <laughs> to figure it out. But I'm sure Amada, uh, having run many of these seats before, will be able to figure out that room relatively easily. Cat is still exploring Norfair, looking for any kind of progression items. Uh, there are a lot of rooms to work off of in here. Unfortunately, all of her paths through this are going to be blocked without having that morph ball. Um, one can only hope that she will, at some point, relatively soon, return to uh, the little guy room. And uh, so what Cat's doing right now, as well, is marking on her map where certain things are and what items are needed to get through them. So, for example, she just marked in that other room that she needs bombs in order to get through and grab that item. Uh, you can at least the 10 of these markers at a time on the map. They will provide you uh, lots of insight into where you should go back to once you've found certain items. And I think Kat's on her way back to the little guy room. Oh, and it, it appears that, uh, that Arborelli has found the uh, boots and the uh, first missile pack, so she's well on her way as well. Amada is now doing uh, what we politically refer to as a um, as a hazard run, uh, where she's just pushing through a hazard room as fast as possible, trying to get as uh, as many items as possible out of it before perishing. Because hazards are on, it uh, it definitely sets her up for um, for having to do a lot of those sorts of runs. Uh, they want to get as much help as possible so they can get through those runs without without dying. Um, 
given where Varya suit is in this seed, this is one of the reasons why this seed was picked. Varya suit is buried pretty deep into the Ridley section. So getting through the hazard areas of Norfair into the hazard areas of Ridley and finding it is both challenging and interesting because there are a lot of hazard rooms in between there. Our runners know this. They should be able to cope with that and deal with the uh, inevitable outcomes. Uh, you can see Cat right now trying to figure out which one of these blocks is destructible. Um, and she's pretty confident that at least one of them is. And I think she's about to find it right now. There we go. <laughs> so Cat has now found the uh, what is going to be the Morph Ball. And that is another step forward. Arborelia has just caught up and caught the uh, space jump. Interestingly enough, um, if Arborelia does go towards the little guy room, uh, she might find Morph Ball quickly, and that'll put her back on even footing. Uh, we can see Amada right now specifically doing uh, another one of those um, hazard traversals to try and get further in. Uh, she is going to run into a bit of a wall um, when she finds Ridley. So she's she's on her way towards the Ridley section looking for that, that Varia suit. Uh, what's going to happen, though, is she's going to hit this first room in Ridley and is going to stop her cold. Uh, there are, again, multiple checks people build into these rooms to force the runners to have specific items before they can get through. In this case, the one that leads into the Ridley section is, unfortunately, uh, Spring Ball. So it can only be traversed and completed with Spring Ball. It's one of the more effective versions of that that I've seen. Again, at this point, Amada has a pretty substantial lead with having bombs and having that sensor core. Um, what Amada is doing right now is trying to uh, cheese through one of the sections. This section is supposed to be done with Spring Ball. These are called Security Vaults. The way Security Vaults tend to work is you need Spring Ball to traverse that section up top. Um, oh, <laughs> that, is, that is very painful for her. Uh, so she got through using a bomb jump, which is not the way you're supposed to do it. Uh, but accidentally reset the door uh, on her way out. So there we go. She got she got it this time through. Um, those are Zepatites. Uh, traditionally, they're in uh, the Mother Brain room of the game. Uh, they require 10 missiles. They start regenerating if you don't shoot them fast enough. They're found in basically every vault because you cannot shoot wave beam through them to check what the item is. You have to finish the vault to see what that item is. All right, so we see that uh, Amada has found Ridley, and she's about to hit the first major stumbling block. Um, the goal of this game, and just to make this clear, I don't think we covered this yet, uh, this game is designed to force you to beat uh, four bosses. Oh, Amada is taking a novel approach to this and might be able to get into, might be able to get into Ridley without doing the, uh, without doing the spring ball. And she did. So Amada has now just uh, sequence broke a bit using infinite bomb jumping. It's a tactic that we absolutely uh, appreciate in the running community. Just uh, if you can bypass the check without doing it the right way, that's the way it should be done. Uh, so um, uh, right now Amada is just going to see what she can find in here. What she's going to find is a whole lot of hazard rooms. Uh, and with the four E-tanks she has, that's going to be quite difficult to traverse. Uh, she's also going to use bombs to try and bypass this jump as well. Um, and potentially, she got it. Uh, it was only for a missile pack, but she's really just showing me the power that is having bombs in this game. A lot of these seeds can be broken for Spring Ball by being good with using using bomb drops. Uh, let's take a look at what Flannel Cat's doing right now. Flannel is uh, currently exploring more criteria. Uh, Flannel's got the right idea. Flannel knows that she has the Morph Ball, and that opens up some other spaces, other places. So, ideally, what she's going to do is start looking through some of these other areas that Space Jump and Morph Ball gave her access to. Uh, in this case, she also found the, the Aegis Core. Uh, the Aegis Core is a very powerful core that gives you additional time of iframes after you've been hit. So, for every hit she takes, she has three times the number of normal iframes. So, it's about a second and a half where she's immune to damage after being hit. And it's either a second and a half or, or three seconds. I, I don't quite remember off the top of my head. But, yeah. So she's now got a little bit of an advantage from taking damage. Uh, this does not affect hazards in any way. Ellie Acre is currently looking uh, for her Morph Ball. So hopefully she will be uh, able to go back to the little guy room. See what she can find there. Uh, this room is particularly punishing as well. Those little uh, flying bug things are... They, they swarm and they do a lot of damage. It's really uh, difficult to deal with if you don't have something like this phaser. And Amada's still just making an absolute, uh, 
absolute uh, triumph over this uh, of this Ridley area. She's been exploring all of the different possibilities, and she's quite close to finding Varya's suit, which would be a huge game changer for her. Uh, it makes all of those hazard runs substantially easier to deal with. Uh, so, do you have anything uh, you want to add in? Yeah, while our runners are looking, let's uh, jump in with a quick donation here. We have $50 from Iron Fairs, with no comment, but they did put their donation towards some of our open bid wars. Right now, we have two bid wars open for the next run, Resident Evil Remake, uh, one of which is Door versus Lock Randomizer. Door Randomizer is winning, but only by $9, so if you want to see that Lock Randomizer, a $10 donation, make sure you put it towards the Lock randomizer and uh you can get lock randomizer in the lead and as well we also have that bid war still open for jill's outfit there's four different choices there you can see all of those on the donation tracker i'll say i'm very much in favor of seeing the uh the door randomizer over the lock randomizer should be interesting either way though <laughs> right, so to it. So it looks like Amada is still just going to be exploring North Air for, uh, not for North Air, uh, Ridley for a little bit. Um, she knows there's something here. Uh, there's always going to be something accessible in these areas. They tend to try and distribute uh, two major items per area, uh, something like that. It's not always that that solid. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's one. But we know there's probably something good in the Ridley area. And uh, she's just going full force into it, hoping to find that Varia suit. Or some other item. I don't think she knows it's Varya, but she suspects it. <sighs> she suspects there's something there, rather, I should say. <laughs> yeah, so, um, looks like Elia is still looking for her Morph Ball. Um, there are, again, there are a lot of ways to get tripped up in this, looking for some of these early items. Um, and in a room like the little guy room, where it is a uh, very difficult puzzle to solve, it's not very clear how it's supposed to be uh, solved. It can be a little daunting why people sometimes tend to back off of these things. Um, it looks like uh, looks like Amada has decided that it's just the juice isn't worth the squeeze and that the, uh, the runs through the hazards are not really benefiting her. So she's going to go looking for other things to do. There are quite a few. Um, her advancement should be pushing her more towards going to Brinstar. Uh, at this point, Brinstar is really where the, the, where the, uh, the push forward is going to happen. Uh, there are, again, four bosses, uh, Mother Brain, Trade, Ridley, and uh, Spore Spawn making an appearance from Super Metroid. Uh, the Spore Spawn rooms are actually a lot of fun in this. They're designed around a uh, somewhat true to the Super Metroid version of Spore Spawn, in which Spore Spawn moves around the room uh, while there are different spores that are released from the sides of the walls. And uh, your idea is to just try and, when the mouth is open, deal damage. Uh, it's a little more simplified than this, uh, a little less, uh, he's a little less angry, let's put it that way. Uh, the fight does take a little bit of time, and it is required to clear, uh, clear spore spawn if they are spawned in. Uh, you will see that the boss fights in this game are very, very reminiscent of the originals, in that Ridley and Kraid are really not that difficult from a proper boss fight perspective, unless they, they draw bad arenas, and it's entirely possible. There are a lot of different arenas that are built for each of these boss fights, and some of them are just designed to be really, really hard to navigate around. Right, so it looks like Amada is sort of bounding between doing more of uh, more of Ridley and more of uh, more of Norfair. Um, with her current loadout, though, Brinstar is definitely the place to go. Uh, it looks like Cat has found Rex. Uh, oh no, Cat has found Brinstar. Uh, in, in what is one of the funnier rooms, the uh, scrambled beta room. Really funny, funny room uh, from its design aspects. Uh, just the utter chaos that is this room. <laughs> uh, it's based on, um, there are certain rooms that are very popular within the community. Um, those vault rooms that we saw earlier are a running joke within the community. There are dozens and dozens of variations of them. Lots of people adding things. And what Catch just illustrated there was our first map room. So when we find a map station, we can use that then to chart specific areas of the map that we want to see. Places we suspect there are items, or places we're not sure if there are external paths. Oh, and she also found the Surge Core, which is another really, really decent uh, core. Uh, gives you an auto-fire, so really great for not having to uh, spam buttons. Uh, it does slow down if you hold the button down too long, though, so 
and she found Ice Beam, so she can now combat Metroids. That is a very, very important thing. As we can see right now, Amada is dealing with the fact that there are Metroids in her way. Uh, in, I believe this is still... Yeah, she's still in, in uh, Norfair. Uh, going past the Metroids without Ice Beam is considered out of logic. So right now, Amada is just hoping she can find something in this area that will uh, justify bypassing those Metroids and skipping logic. Cast returned from Brinstar. Uh, it looks like she's going to do some more exploration in Criteria. Uh, her goal right now is finding bombs. That's really the thing that's holding her back. So hopefully we'll see her find the other elevator, which is actually right in this area. So the other elevator is really, really close by, uh, which will let, allow her to get down to right ship, allow her to find bombs, uh, and allow her to progress. And uh, as far as... Arborelia. He is, again, still looking for that Morph Ball. Morph Ball is elusive in this. It was put in a place that is yeah, like, very tricky to find, very tricky to execute on, because it is just one giant puzzle room with a single block that is accessible. It's a matter of going through and just testing all of those blocks. Yep. Uh, what Kat just illustrated there, the uh, endless room that she uh, she just shown, that is uh, a clear example of a one-by-one -one cap room. A lot of them are a door that goes in and just doesn't, there's nothing in there for it to go. There's no place to go, so it's just sort of a way to cap off spare doors. Uh, the logic of this map generator kind of requires there are a lot of those. Is there are a lot of people that build massive rooms that have lots of doors, and if you don't have enough caps to close those off, you either have to fill loops around to those doors, and the shape can be very different. So it's, it's good to have a lot of uh, single room terminators like that. Uh, it's not something you typically see in the original Metroid because they, they wanted to make sure they were maximizing all of the map building so that it was useful. It's, it's, it's to a certain degree. There are a lot of like blind alleys and uh, rewardless sections in the first game. Looks like Kat has found Wrecked Ship, uh, which I know is one of her personal favorite rooms. Uh, the room she's in right now uh, is called the, uh, the Hallway Back Rooms. It is uh, a joke on liminal spaces. Um, which I believe she's seen before. Give it her behavior, and there are her bombs. That is a big step forward for her. Uh, so she's going to take those bombs, I assume, and this is what I would do. I'm sure this is actually what I did when I found that, was immediately went back to grab the sensor core. Being able to see that in in uh, Norfair is a great motivator to go back there as soon as possible and grab it, because it's going to show you all the little secrets. Uh, in this case, though, uh, she's opting to do these rooms. Uh, this is a uh, destroyed version of the vaultway. It's um, kind of unique uh, as these games go, specifically with this particular uh, this particular uh, map style. Uh, again, this is sort of like the vault. It's an inside joke, so there are dozens and dozens of variations of it. In this case, uh, the vaultway is typically a two by two, uh, sorry, two by one where you go in the vault, you finish the vault, there is a door into another vault behind it, usually hidden and obscured, so people either have to open the vault to figure out there's more, but in this case, it was a condensed, kind of crushed down version of it. Yeah, Kat is doing more exploration through the wrecked ship, hoping to find uh, any number of progression items. Uh, and with her having her ice beam already, she's able to take out these Metroids without any, uh, any consternation. And with bombs, she's able to get them off of her, which is an, another very important aspect of, of the early Metroid. The only way to get Metroids off of you once you've got them on is to drop bombs. Which I carried through into the other the other games in the franchise as well. Uh, you see that in Super Metroid, although you can also use power bombs to kill Metroids when they're on top of you anyway. Uh, so now we get to see if uh, we get to see if Cat's going to try and do a uh, spring ball manipulation to get past the spring check entirely possible. This one's a bit harder. Uh, the ones that uh, Amada skipped over earlier were closer to the ground, uh, which means you can drop bombs and use them to kind of launch yourself back up. In this case, the way it's set up, it's not really as feasible to skip it. She also has to be very careful. Uh, if there is a, a if there is a, an elevator on the other side, say that wreck ship were to lead somewhere else, um, which isn't really in logic, it doesn't really, really happen, but if this were any other area, uh, when you reach an elevator, you are locked to that elevator. When you respawn, it will take you right back there. So, Cat needs to be careful uh, when doing these sorts of skips that she's not having to get stuck on the other side. 
uh, there were several seeds that were pushed out of the way for this seed specifically because of the fact that they had little little things like that that cost stop lots. Uh, she pointed out these are all community rooms. They're all made by people. People are fallible. Uh, so a lot of these rooms, there are rooms that will have issues with the way that they're logically laid out. They might not account for having or not having certain items. So in the case of the, the map room, the, the room I was talking about earlier, it required Wave to get through, but it would lock you to the elevator, meaning that if you didn't have Wave, you couldn't get back. So you didn't need Wave to actually get locked to the elevator, but you did need it to get out. And as it was a gateway to another area, you wouldn't be able to get Wave in that area. So let's take a look at... Let's take a look at Arborelia really quick. Uh, it looks like Elia is uh, still looking for more fall. Um, and that's, again, deeply unfortunate. And it's not the like not the easiest thing to find. Uh, and this is a, a key example as well of getting locked to an elevator. Uh, Elliot got to the Ridley elevator and in a, an attempt to warp back to the main area, decided to go to Ridley, which clearly isn't accessible because it requires more fall to get through. Um, a Mata right now still exploring criteria. Got running through wrecked ship still. Um, eventually, they're all going to turn back looking for other things. Um, Really, it's a matter of just figuring out where, for logic's sake, where Spring Bowl is next. That's what both Elia, and, that's what both Cat and uh, and Amada are looking for right now. Uh, that's really the the next logical step. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after that, it's just various suit, and then they start going for bosses. Uh, the beam weapons in this game are useful, but they are seldom required. Wave is the only one that gets a lot of real attention, and sometimes long beam and wave are combined to make specific checks happen. But uh, you can get through most of these most of these uh, rooms without having any specific type of beam weapon. It's really only when they build in intentional checks that it becomes a thing. Elia looks like she's heading back towards the uh, the area towards Criteria. Um, hopefully, she decides to take another look at that little guy room. Uh, I know when I was doing the vetting, that also tripped me up. So. It is a uh, an odd room, and it's one of those things where it seems like it's larger and too and too um, obscure to really dive into. But yeah, there we go. She's taking another crack at this, trying to figure out how to solve it, knowing that there are items she can't see. There are two missiles that are openly available. There is one item that is in the middle in that central core area that is completely obfuscated. So I think she's kind of figured out that this is going to be where her morph ball is, and she just needs to. Just hopefully hit that one corner. And looks like she's uh, spawning back in. She's using uh, a tactic uh, called fire. Well, not uh, called anything. She's firing missiles at blocks uh, to try and determine what type of, of blocks they are, uh, just to make sure she's not looking at a bomb block that she can't break. Uh, in this case, if she hits it with a missile, it's not going to reveal anything anyway. It's just going to break the block. So it's a matter of. She's going to go through and just one by one shoot at these uh, these blocks to see if she can find some indication of what to do. These rooms are, uh, this room in particular is very tricky. It's uh, got one tiny hidden section. Also, uh, you can see a message from the creator of that room. It says sorry in the bottom corner because it is, again, kind of a trollish room in how it's hidden that block. It's kind of unfortunate. Ah, Namata has found her ice beam. That is another, another step towards logic. Um, in this case, um, since she's going for Spring Ball, she should probably explore more Brinstar. Um, she might take this idea and turn around, look for other things that Ice might make accessible. There is the Spring Ball. Uh, it is in the same room, uh, Kat had missed it earlier, and she just found it, so they're both pretty much on par with each other. Um, the only thing that Kat is missing right now is, uh, the Spazer, otherwise they have the same item loadout. Spring Ball is uh, going to be important for getting to pass some of those checks with high, combined with high jump. They've got most of their movement tech at this point. There isn't really any kind of movement tech check they can't get past. Uh, it's now going to be doing a lot of hazard runs. It's going to be finding those other those other weapons and uh, yeah, figuring out where their Varia suit is. Uh, also, screw attack, but that won't come into play later. That's uh, buried very deeply in the seed and is the last item they should find. Alright, if uh, there are any donations or updates, uh, feel free. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to just remind everyone that 
Randomania is here in support of NAMI. The National Alliance on Mental Illness is the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization dedicated to building better lives for the millions of Americans affected by mental illness. And their vision is to provide advocacy, education, support, and public awareness so that all individuals and families affected by mental illness can build better lives. If you'd like more information, please visit NAMI.org. And of course, we still do have those two bid wars open uh, for Resident Evil Remake. Uh, you can check those out either at our donation page or at the incentive page. And don't forget, if you are making a donation, make sure you go and assign your donation to an incentive. Don't let your money slide past those incentives. So we can see uh, Kat using more of that map to uh, more of that map station to reveal different places. The more map stations you find, the more charges you get. They recycle every 15 minutes. So uh, every 15 minutes from now on, Kat can drop three charges. Uh, of that onto any part of the map. So locating map stations and locating multiple map stations is very important for doing more exploration of the map. And yeah, we see Elia is still working at that uh, little guy room. Um, looks like she's she's heading in the right direction. She's just got to hit that that corner. Um, again, hidden quite well. So. And we see Kat doing more of the hazard running as well for her portions of Brinstar. Um, her first check through ended in uh, her running into some, some uh, hazard walls. So uh, spikes don't always have to look like spikes. In this case, uh, the spikes look like a giant trail pit. And uh, yeah, for, uh, for Amada, it looks like she's still exploring uh, part of Crave now. So she's gotten further in. Um, there are distinct subsections for each boss. Uh, Spore Spawn will always be found in Brinstar. Crade will always be found in the Crade section, Ridley will always be found in the Ridley section, and Mother Brain will always be found in Thorian. They are the only bosses that exist for the game so far, but there are plans, as I understand, to expand that to include additional bosses in the future. Um, this game is currently in production, and uh, yeah, there are always updates following through it. So, features are constantly being added, things are constantly being tweaked, there are multiple game modes as well, so... Uh, looks like we have a we have the spore spawn room has been found by Cat, so we get to see the this particular spore spawn room. It is kind of a beast. This is one of the meaner spore spawn rooms I've seen. And Cat is trying a different strategy for uh, dealing with spore spawn, which is dropping bombs at the base. And uh, looks like she's gonna swap to focusing on on spore spawn directly. Uh, Spore Spawn's contact damage is pretty mean. You can see Cat taking lots of damage for each one of those hits. So she has to be very careful. Um, yeah, dropping those bombs at Spore Spawn makes the mouth open sooner. So we're, uh, just waiting for her to figure out how to get at Spore Spawn like that. Uh, hopefully get some health back from these, uh, these spawners. And she was taken out, unfortunately. So it looks like Amada is still ch uh, still charging through Crade. Again, lots of hazard areas in this. Uh, this room in particular, there is no actual contact space, but those those blocks that are raised over the flowers. So you could have run straight through them, but given that she has space jump, it doesn't matter either way. Um, it just, yeah, it's just one of those things where it's kind of trolling, but not really. And it looks like, uh, let's see, she's found the Crade room. Uh, this is uh, important. This is one of the things where she has an advantage. This is a room that was generated by, and it was built by her, so she knows how it's supposed to work. Uh, she also found screw attack, so that's a very, very big find. Uh, that is going to make combat pretty much trivial for the rest of this. But the problem is, Amad is now going to kill, now going to kill Kraid in uh, 30 health, which is just not going to happen. So it's going to have to run back there and take care of Kraid. And it is not a short run back. So it looks like uh, Elia is once again going looking for that morph ball. Cat is you know, wandering her way through uh, through Brinstar, going back to that spore spawn fight. Things have really picked up. Um, these fights, uh, we've seen the first boss fights. There are, again, going to be all total four bosses. Uh, three of which are actual bosses, and uh, Mother Brain's more of a um, more of a puzzle room than a boss in a lot of ways. Um, usually, when you talk about the original game, it was literally just destroy the Zebatites and then shoot Mother Brain. But in this case, uh, usually these rooms are more complicated. They have more hidden Zebatites, and you cannot hurt Mother Brain until the Zebatites are destroyed. Mm, looks 
like Amada is on her way back right now. So we've uh, we've hit a point where we've got two two people going straight for bosses rather than looking for additional items because they know they can take those bosses out. Uh, Amada is you know, just going as fast as she can through these uh, through these hazard zones, knowing that the faster she can get through, the easier things are going to be for her. Uh, having space jump early kind of negates some of the challenges of some of those those rooms like that where it's expecting you to have a certain wave beam to open up a bridge. In this case, uh, having that space jump just lets you completely bypass that. Uh, it looks like Kat has found Torian. Um, Torian is... Um, normally, if you're talking about the original game, Torian is just a section that leads up to Mother Brain, so there are no things to be found there, but Torian is considered a valid area in this, meaning that Torian can have progression items. Um, that's one of those things that definitely throws people the first time they play through this, and Kat, seeing she doesn't have enough missiles to handle taking out the Zepatite, uh, is now taking out some Rinkas, hopefully to get some additional missiles. Uh, the Rinkas are pretty generous with the missiles they drop, so typically they'll always drop missiles, um, unless they're so you're desperate on health. And Kat has unfortunately hit yet another hazard area with very low health, so it looks like she's probably not going to make it through this. Uh, I should also call out the uh, the idea of doing the respawn. Uh, if you do a force respawn, it will take you back to the elevator, give you full health, give you full ammunition, and maintain whatever progress you've gotten thus far. Uh, it's akin to what you can do with Super, uh, what you can do with regular Metroid, where if you have the uh, second player controller, you can hit a reset code that'll move you after certain events have happened. It'll save that progress. Uh, it basically just ends your your current your current uh, run and takes you back to the last place you respawn. They just made it easier, because there's no reason to have two controllers for this. Alright, so... Didn't quite see if Kat took out uh, Sports Bomb, but I would I would assume so, given her progression on to Morian. Okay, looks like Amada is still going through and exploring uh, more of Kraid. Probably looking for some next progression point. Um, and now she's got enough health, she should easily be able to go down there and take out Kraid with Screw Attack. In the original game, Screw Attack did not affect the bosses. Um, in a lot of the later games, Screw Attack doesn't affect bosses. But for this game, because of the style and design, it does. So she should be able to get Kraid. She got Kraid down. Excellent. Uh, if you're familiar with Metroid 86, you might know that killing the bosses in that game gives you 50 missiles. That's been removed for this. Wasn't necessary, uh, since there are just so many more missiles spread about. Um, looks like Amada is doing a force respawn as well. It is faster to respawn if you know you're not going to make it through a room than it is to take the death. Uh, just marginally so. Looks like Kat is uh, still going to go through and look for more of Torian right now. Um, so given what Amada has and what Kat has, their their next goals are going to be finding that Naria suit. That's really going to give them carte blanche to look anywhere they want through the rest of this map uh, to try and find that wave beam and that long beam. Uh, yeah, so they're they're burning through this pretty quickly. And we'll find out a lot of these things quite quickly. And as we see, uh, Elia has worked her way through the little guy room, gotten more fall, and is now in the process of looking through some of the other areas in Criteria that were missed the first time. Uh, she does not have, not have bombs, but she does have missiles. Missiles can be used in place to get through regular breakable blocks. Not bomb blocks, just breakable blocks. So she's able to use missiles to do that little bit of uh, additional breaking. Uh, they do not have a limit on their range, so they go about as fast as you can fire them. Um, and they, they are, you only have one on screen at a time. So with her, with her current setup, she could take a couple seconds just to fire those missiles. And Amada trying to sneak through the drill bit, that's just not how that works. Uh, those are considered spikes, so they do additional damage. Um, you kind of think of like some of these elements as being background elements, but in that case it was foreground and doing damage. Spikes that aren't spikes. Always fun. Uh, we see Kat has kind of given up on doing Torian for now. It's all hazard runs, so there's really nothing she can do. And the the most she can she can glean from that is either finding a major item stored there or figuring out where Mother Brain is. Uh, and that's really another of the key point of this game is figuring out where these boss fights are. You can only glean so much from doing map station checks. Uh, they will tell you if you find a boss door directly, but it's usually faster and more efficient than waiting for charges to try and find those boss doors yourself while you're looking for items. 
Looks like Armada has found her way to the the, the uh, sports bond fight. Alright, so Armada is going to do the same strategy as the cat did, but Armada has the distinct advantage of having uh, screw attack, which again affects sports bond uh, the way all the other bosses are affected. She's gonna just do that, basically wait until Sports Bond opens up, and then just use that Screw Attack to make very swift work of, of Sports Bond. Uh, screw Attack is incredibly useful in this. And now she's on her way to Torian, uh, is gonna do the same thing Cat was doing, just digging around, looking for those checks, trying to find uh, either the Mother Brain Room or some item that she can use to glean where to go next. Um, again, their movement tech is very well suited right now. They have essentially all the movement tech they're going to need for the rest of this. Uh, they're really just looking for that hazard protection. They're looking for the beam weapon protection. Or beam weapons, rather. Major focus. Uh, also, uh, just to do a piece of the... Uh, Cat likes to read off the... Uh, so all the, all the planet names that are set for this are actual planets. Uh, the names are pulled from the list of all of the existing planets, and, and, and uh, it's, it's planets, stars, um, comets, asteroids. So Hidalgo, which is the one this map is named after, uh, 944 Hidalgo, is a uh, centaur, an unusual object on an eccentric, cometary-like orbit between the asteroid belt and the outer solar system. All of them have uh, some kind of, like, association to an actual astral phenomenon, which is quite interesting. And uh, the little extra stuff they didn't need to take when they did this. The developers are definitely passionate about this being a fun and interesting and engaging process. Uh, it looks like Kat has found trade, so Kat is now on her way to catch up to Amada in that regard. Uh, Amada's still doing more of that exploration of, uh, of Torian, which, again, at this point, uh, is gonna be fruitless. There is nothing in Torian to find that is useful at this point. Uh, Wave Beam exists there, but it's not necessary, um, and it's... Not, I don't, I do not believe there's a wave check at the end either, so it's not even required to find it. Um, other than that, looks like uh, Elia is still doing more exploration of the, uh, of the map in Criteria. Uh, going back to all of those checks that uh, she couldn't do before, now that she's got more fault, there are a lot of them to look through. There are a lot of bomb checks as well, so hopefully she'll find her way to wreck ship at some point soon, find that bomb, and start working through some of those checks. There are quite a lot of them, uh, given this is a large map generation with seven areas, there are items spread out everywhere. Uh, it is not uncommon for a large seven area map to have 300 plus missiles, uh, and to have a large distribution. Uh, the E-Tanks, I believe, are capped at, I want to say eight, off the top of my head, I believe that's correct. Uh, but they are capped, so there are a lot of missiles that'll fill in that extra space. Uh, it looks like, uh, looks like, uh, Amada has found, uh, one of the safe areas within Torian, and is exploring a bit there. Uh, she might actually find Wave Beam. See another one of those, uh, single room end cap terminator things. Uh, so kind of solving this, this puzzle room, uh, for Kraid the way that it is expected to be solved. Uh, and that is by trial and error, going up and down, figuring out what of those combinations will lead her to the, uh, the right doors being open to, to fight grade. It's difficult, and it is a little bit time-consuming. That does not look like she found Screw Attack there. Uh, let me just confirm that with an extra... Yeah, she has not found Screw Attack. So, it's not going to make a lot of things easier. It's also not necessary. Screw Attack doesn't really pass in those checks. There's, I believe, one designer that makes checks that require Screw Attack. Um, it's really not something that's common, and it's almost never logically blocking. All right. Um, what else there's same moment? Uh, if you have any like some donations, announcements, that kind of thing, that would be wonderful right now. Yeah, absolutely. This race has been so interesting to watch so far. Um, just to remind the folks of a little bit of what Nami does. Um, stigma harms one in five Americans affected by mental health conditions. It shames them into silence and prevents them from seeking help. The stigma-free campaign is Nami's effort to end stigma and create hope for those affected by mental illness. Through powerful worlds and actions, we can shift the social and systemic barriers for those living with mental health conditions. Indeed, there is so much hope that comes from the work that Nami does, and if you are able to, and you wish to, 
you can type exclamation mark donate in the chat to get a link to go and make a donation towards our fantastic cause and potentially impact our next run resident evil remake we do still have those bid wars open one for door versus lock randomizer and one for jill's outfit in the game so do go check all of those out absolutely wonderful cause and a wonderful way to uh, to help folks stigma is a huge issue in the mental with mental illness and it's it's wonderful to see an organization working towards that towards uh, helping with that all right so it looks like uh it looks like amada has found wave beam that's uh, another big step for her uh wave beam checks are there are a couple that are spread throughout this seed i don't believe any of them are blocking anything useful so it's just a little bit of fluff right now also until she finds long beam which is buried deep in in the ridley area um she's uh, not really gonna have use for for that for any kind of long range checking there are certain ones specifically like the one we saw with the robot there that uh block that door and i believe she's on the path right now to where mother brain is gonna be but given the way oh yeah given the way that these maps are structured and how the uh how the gameplay tends to function she won't be able to get into that and uh and fight mother brain just yet she has to have all of the other bosses taken care of beforehand so she's gonna find herself with a yellow door that will not open hopefully uh can use that knowledge then to just know like once she once she gets those two bosses done she's basically clear to run straight to mother brain it's just a matter of well, actually she still only needs ridley i think she's looking right now primarily for uh her varia suit I do not believe she's taken out Ridley at this point. This is also quite a run through a hazardous area, which means she's probably just not going to have the health to... She definitely isn't going to have the health to finish this seed without Varia suit. So she's very close to finding that room. Let's, I'm, I'm hoping for her sake that she, she finds the Mother Brain door, which is the bottom of this room. Uh, oh, so close. It's, uh, it's in that room. Now the question is, is Amada going to try and dive again to try and find that door and get confirmation? Or is she going to take that assumption and just work back, start going towards Ridley? And it looks like she's going to go further in. Well, oh, oh, maybe. Yep, she's going further in. Amula, or Aurelius, still exploring parts of Norfair, uh, looking for that bomb set. Um, and this is uh, one of those things where it's kind of tricky. Finding that correct ship Finding that with Morph Ball is incredibly important for, for advancing. Um, bombs kind of hidden. Basically, everything in the seed was, was hidden in a way that was kind of difficult to find. So it's, it's a matter of uh, a little bit of luck, a, lot, a little bit of skill figuring out where you think you should look for certain things. In the case of Wrecked Ship, Wrecked Ship is, is kind of a, a last bastion, as it were. Uh, it doesn't have a boss in it. Uh, it is, it, I believe, generated last of all of the areas. So placement for certain items is not usually uh, straightforward. And it looks like uh, we've got the Chrono Core on Path's side. Chrono Core is a unique core, and what it does is it slows down projectiles and enemies that are within a certain range of the character. Uh, it can be useful for very certain situations, but right now Cat is just not going to swap off of the core she's already got on. Uh, she's not using the Sensor Core right now, I believe she's still using the Aegis Core. And there we go, Amada has found Mother Brain. Oh, I, I might have been incorrect. Amada might have... Uh, Amada did, in fact, find Ridley. I think we, we have uh, almost a conclusion to the first runner of this race. Um, she does have a distinct lead at this point. So, if Amada can get through this, and she can manage to get through the end without Varia suit, she might finish this seed quite early. Um, there were a lot of things that played into this happening, primarily getting here quickly, fighting some of those bosses, being very aggressive with diving. So, yeah, I do not know how I missed it, but yeah, she took out Ridley. Um, this is gonna be interesting. Uh, there is a quite long run at the end. Uh, there are, I believe, seven minutes that are budgeted for the escape. Uh, typically only takes about three at this point. Uh, I know it took me about three when I went through it, so if Amada doesn't run out of missiles, which is entirely possible given the lack of exploration, uh, then, she might be able to get through this. Um, and she's using all of, all of her advantages right now, using that screw attack to bypass the need to use missiles on the uh, mobs there. Um, she's going to run into a few things that might 
might stop her up. If she does not get through this in time, she ends up dying on the way through. She will have to fight Mother Brain again, but those Zebatites will be gone, so her missile count will be substantially higher the second time through. Which would be a loss in time, but not so much so that it's a, it's a serious issue. And uh, because she has screw attack as well, all of those Metroids, they cannot latch onto her when she's, she's doing screw attack jumps. So with Spaceship and Screw Attack, it is safe to traverse those Metroid rooms without expecting to have to fight them. Also, using the freeze to just sort of bypass certain things uh, like that, specifically keeping the Metroids away, kind of thing. It's always very useful. Now, this is the obstacle course. I believe each one of those uh, heads right there are considered spikes. So she's going to try and navigate through here without touching any of those as much as possible. Um, there's also, uh, trouble block floors that will reseal back up if you touch them and fall through. And, uh, they will require you to go up into the ceiling and run back out. And Amada is in the last stretch of the run at this point. Um, just really cleaning up. You can see our other runners still have a ways to go. And, uh, yeah. Spring ball check here. Um, that has tripped up more than a few runners who just didn't get Spring Ball. Uh, Amada is now trying to farm health off of the Rinkas here. Because she knows she takes too much health, she's gonna have to redo this whole run back, so... And she's not sure what rooms are coming up next. She's not sure if she's gonna run into a, uh, into a hazard room that might do some additional damage. But she is pretty much free and clear at this point. There's, uh, at this point... What, two rooms. I do not know if there are hazard rooms off the top of my head, but we will see. Uh, she's almost made it, and she's got plenty of time. The timer for this was incredibly generous. Uh, I expected that hazard room to take a lot longer, the one specifically with those floating heads. Uh, so now she's just gonna avoid some rinkas, get through this, go through the top of this room. She is out, and she will be the first competitor to finish. Very close. And there we go. Mata has completed, and she is uh, she's taken first. So this is the this is a fun fact. When you find certain things that quickly, Amada really got lucky finding a lot of items very quickly. Uh, it can really affect the speed at which a race is completed. Um, Kat and Elia are a bit further behind, so we should see that this is going to continue for a bit. So those two are going to be competing against each other for second place. Um, I believe we can get Amada in chat, right? Is that correct? I do believe so. Just, uh, give our tech folks a moment. Sure thing. Yeah, it'd be nice to have uh, someone to help co-commentate the remainder of this race. time. Uh, we can talk more about what Kat is currently doing. Uh, Kat's exploring more of Norfair. There are a lot of things that opened up since the last time she was looking through uh, her item selection. Um, so there are just a whole bunch of different areas that were at some point closed off. Unfortunately, again, a lot of these rooms are not specifically necessary for navigation to find things. There are a lot of uh, blind alleys, a lot of checks that are just going to pop in here and there. Missiles, E-tanks. Uh, yeah. She's also used her map, uh, map finding to figure out a lot of the other places she can go right now. Um, again, having all of those map rooms is really, really crucial to figuring out where your next checks are going to be and what you're going to do through that. Yeah. Uh, looks like Kat is working her way again. Like I said, through Norfair, uh, Elia is currently working her way through Criteria. Uh, hopefully looking for wrecked ship, um, trying to figure out where that next elevator is. Uh, the elevators can be a little obfuscated at times, kind of hard to find. Uh, and what kind of found there is the core dynamo. This would be more important if she were swapping cores more frequently. Uh, the core dynamo lets you swap cores uh, every three minutes instead of every five minutes. Uh, it's designed that way so you can't min-max by swapping cores constantly. So it kind of helps to have that, uh, that whole setup there. Wow, that was a seed. That was certainly a seed, Amada. I will say you—you you were incredible. You hit a lot of stuff very quickly. Um, oh. I am 
I was skeptical you were going to make it through without Varya, but you, you definitely did. I, I was starting to get worried I wouldn't make it through without Varya. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely one of those things. Seeing you try and farm health right there at the end, that was very incredible, very tense kind of moment there. Oh Fifteen my god, I, so my ball. heart was almost beaten out of my chest there. Yeah, you, like I said, you, you found a lot of things very quickly. Um, finding bombs that fast really gave you a distinct advantage. I, I could imagine. Yeah, right now, uh, did you caught up on what's going on? Elia, uh, I don't know if you can see the feed as well, um, but... I... Elia is currently working through trying to uh, take both uh, her more fallen bombs to figure out where to go next. Um, right now, Kat is working through. She's got four spawn down, um, and she was not able to finish Kraid in time. Um, again, distinct advantages given that you were the designer of the Kraid room. <laughs> that is true. Minor advantage there. Just a slight <laughs> advantage. Yeah, so uh, that's that's kind of where we're at right now, is uh, Kat and Elia are going to be facing off trying to figure out that second place spot. But yeah, congratulations on winning the race! Wow. I I was so worried that whole time. I was like, I need wave beam. I need wave beam. I'm going to need wave beam. I didn't even need wave beam, but I found it anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was, I was talking about that as, as things were going on. Yeah, wave beam was very directly in Torian, and it wasn't really that necessary for anything. Uh, you, you needed to get through that last section, obviously, to take out the, uh, the robots to get down to Mother Brain. But it, otherwise, it was not going to stop you from doing any other main progression. Ah. Uh, and for for the record, Varya was in Ridley space. You just missed the check accidentally. Yeah, that that checks out. Yeah, um, I didn't actually didn't even see you find Ridley. <laughs> Uh, I missed that. I was too busy focusing on cat doing exploration in other areas. I, I was gonna make sure that even if the seed didn't want to give me any interesting hazard runs, I sure was. Yeah, you, you made the most of it. There are a lot of hazard runs in this. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I chose this seed specifically, is there are lots of hazards. I noticed. <laughs> yep, uh, it's... Well, you, you made a comment earlier, and I can, I can share this, I'm assuming, that you were hoping that it was going to have... Uh, more uh, potent hazards than we sometimes see in seeds. Yeah, I uh, uh, this I did sick. say that. <laughs> uh, you got you got your wish. <laughs> I part of me escaping with like four health regretted saying that, but. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So right now, cat is a uh, cat is climbing the thing. You climbed with bombs. That was another thing I saw you doing yeah. a lot of. Another thing gave you a distinct advantage was bypassing some of these spring ball checks uh, by using bombs and. If you've got the ability to do it, it's always good. It's just outside of logic. So you were able to get to Ridley way sooner than everyone else. I'm going to be honest. I completely forgot Spore Spawn was in this game when I was running towards Torian. <laughs> he just happened to be on the way, and then I saw the purple door. I'm like, oh, right, Spore Spawn's in this game. <laughs> yep. Uh, part of the uh, four boss requirement we have. Uh, when you do seven areas, you're guaranteed to get a Spore Spawn. So it's there's always going to be four bosses for that last one. Um, oh, yeah. that looks like Kat managed to get the, uh, the spring ball jump there, which is fantastic. Nice. And Ellie and I was trying to figure out how to do that without having spring ball. Um, I do not believe I saw her pick that up. I know she has ice beam, but that other room behind it with spring ball was missed both by Cat and it appears to be a lot missed by, uh, Arbor Ellie as well. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, it's only Spazer. It's not that... I think that was Spazer. I don't even remember. No, Spazer was in Red oh. Ship. That was spring ball. So, spring ball is absolutely required for some of these. Um, so... Elliot's going to have to make her way back to Brinstar to find that spring ball before she can make any progress into Ridley. Um, and Kat right now seems like she's, she's trying her best to figure out where the next location is. She's definitely doing the things she's supposed to be doing. She's doing some some hazard runs directly into Ridley, uh, which is kind of what we got to do. The way those rooms are set up. Yeah. But yeah, so this is uh, one heck of a race, and like you were absolutely impressed with how fast you, you just trampled over that seed. <laughs> oh. Hold on, I have to go to the bathroom after that. So, take your time, sure. I'll just I'll continue just commentating over this, but yeah, thank you again for, for that race. That was fantastic. Yeah, so uh, it looks like again, we're, we're at the section now where Cat's just going to be doing diving into Norfair, trying to find any kind of uh, advantage to move forward. Um, hopefully, she will find her Varia suit relatively quickly and be able to take on Ridley, but again, it's just kind of buried deeply in there. I managed to find it by accident when I was looking for the actual boss fight. 
So she might opt to go the same way that Amada Chan went and just uh, go through and uh, try to fight Ridley without it. Try to do some of the bypassing. And in this case, uh, Pat actually has Spring Ball where it was required to do this check. We saw Amada uh, skip that earlier. Now, Elia is still exploring around through the rest of uh, the rest of Norfair, trying to find uh, her Spring Ball. Or whatever would bring her progression. She's aware at this point that Spring Ball is pretty high on the list for progression possibilities. Uh, it is the last piece of movement tech that is needed. Um, as high jump, space jump, and uh, bombs, more fall have already been found. So it's just that last little thing to find. Is now a good moment for me to, to, to jump in? Yes, perfect. Yeah, we have some new bid wars open. I just want to make sure everyone gets to hear about these. Uh, they are all for the final fantasy relay happening at the end of tonight. A uh, whole bunch of options. Uh, we have, first of all, a harp song uh, bid war for whether it will be from Final Fantasy MQ. My Pardon my lack of knowledge here of... Final Fantasy or from Final Fantasy VI. Uh, we also have an option to determine the sprite for the Benjamin character and for the Zeromus sprite. Uh, two separate bid wars there. And as well, another one for an option to name Benjamin. Uh, you can submit you can submit name ideas up to eight characters uh, to determine what Benjamin is going to be called in the run. So if those all sound interesting to you, exclamation mark, donate in chat. And don't forget to add your donation to one of those incentives or for either of the Resident Evil remake incentives that we still have open. So Mystic Quest, always a fun game. A lot of fun with that. Um, yeah, so um, looks like right now it's, it's pretty much the same place we were at before. Cass just doing as much diving as she can, trying to figure out where those other items are. Varia is just, just out of reach. I think her, her goal right now is trying to be up. She's actually on her way right now to where... Varia is. It's on the other side of this room. Uh, it should be in a room off of this. If I remember correctly, that is. And that's going to be a really big find. Um, it's going to make things a lot easier for her. This is just a missile check right now, uh, so there's really nothing specific in there, but I do believe that Varia is in this part of the map. Yeah. It's a lot, of, uh, a lot of checking, especially like the fact is, almost all of Ridley is hazard checks. Hopefully we'll find uh, we'll find some uh, some progression soon on either side. Uh, looks like Elias is still looking for where that uh, that wrecked ship might lead. Um, I think she's just kind of missed the uh, the elevator a couple times, and that's going to make the biggest uh, biggest impact on this is finding that elevator to wrecked ship. Um, no, no, she's got bombs. If I remember correctly, um, no, she doesn't. She hasn't found wrecked ship yet. That explains some of the pro the uh, lack of progress. So she's looking right now to try and find where that, that progression point is. Um, it's actually on the opposite side of that one room, so. We'll see it soon. Uh, it's just a matter of finding it. Looks like a uh, cat's found her way through more of Ridley right now. Um, take a quick look and make sure I'm getting there right. Oh, yeah, no, it's actually, uh, there's, it's sort of in the center of Ridley is where that uh, Varia suit is. So, I think Kat's probably more likely to find the boss than before she finds the, uh, actual Varia suit. Uh, I'm also reasonably sure she suspects she's gonna find Varia in this area. Uh, just based on the current item loadout she has. Honestly, I was like, not expecting a Varia in Ridley. Yeah, I mean, given the amount of fire that was in there, I'm guessing you were expecting to have it beforehand. I, Considering I knew I was already doing some shenanigans I wasn't exactly supposed to. I oh, it looks like that's on the long beam. Was. Yes, long beam and Varya buried very deeply in uh, in Ridley. Yeah, I, I tried to investigate the other side. I saw the wave beam lock in my own room. And <laughs> I figured it was that way. Yeah, entirely possible. Yeah, I mean, uh, the idea is supposed to be like, I guess that would dissuade you from going in there, obviously, if you don't want the wave beam. It's one of those things where you could go, could double back if you were looking for something specific. But by the time you got wave, you would have already known that it wasn't going to be beneficial. 
Yeah. Uh, I think Kat might have found that long beam and thought that might have been the uh, thing that was preventing her from finding another item somewhere else, so she's just uh, wholesale giving up and exploring more of Ridley for the moment, and is uh, looks like she's going back to do something else, possibly do the raid. Um, she did not find the, uh, the screw attack in that room the first time she was in there. Hopefully, however, uh, going back there with a fresh set of eyes, uh, she'll be able to find something, uh, something else there. She'll be able to find that screw attack. And having the sensor this time, the last time she was in that room, she still had Aegis Core equipped. So she couldn't see that false wall. I didn't even, I didn't even find Aegis Core. Where was Aegis Core? <laughs> uh, Aegis Core was in the, uh, the mountain in Criteria. So ah. then you have more fall going through there. Uh, it was, uh, I think a missile, an E-Tank, and an Aegis Core. That, that's a, that's about what's usually in there when you... Yeah. It's either, like, two major items, or that. <laughs> yeah, well, wasn't anything super, super specific, but yeah, it was, uh, was kind of nice to, uh, see that get its, uh, get used, get used, rather. Yeah, Kat's doing more exploration of Norfair. Unfortunately, that area is just not going to lead to anywhere specifically useful. All of these items are just regular missiles. Um, there are a lot of really interesting blind alleys in this map. At least, uh, that's how I've seen it. There was a lot of, uh, uh just sort of It'll take you in one direction, it won't block you off, but it'll set you up to go through and do a long area where there's just really no major benefit, no payoff. Yeah, that... I would agree with that assessment. Which, I mean, it's, it's kind of mean for a C, but it's also one of those things where I think it's it's entertaining in its own right, it gives people the, the opportunity to do more exploration. The only thing I think might have been a little too mean for the C was, was having more fall being little guy. If you know the room, it's not that mean. You're also talking about uh, potential runners that don't know the room. So, that is true. For, my, for myself, when I found it, it was okay, I know there's something in here. I know one of these blocks will break. I just don't know how to break it. I assumed it was a bomb spot or a missile spot. So, for a good 20 minutes, I just ignored the room. Uh, it did very similar to what Arborelia did, where you you don't know if you want to do it because it's a lot of time investment and it's it's a lot of like tedious checking but it was hiding one of the most important items in the game definitely and cats exploring that area that she couldn't without ice beam uh i saw you also logically skip this it's something i yeah. did when i was running through it as well um, i was very worried that torian was going to be back where cat is oh yeah that would make sense especially with those, those metroid blockers yeah like that's mm. Entirely possible. But yeah, so this is also a, a great illustration of why we have the time limit set on, on the time that we do. Um, a very experienced runner like Amada was able to rip this seat apart through no amount of, of just good luck and really solid skill plays. Uh, but you will see some other runners tend to struggle with some of these things because they are very well hidden. Um, and it's, it's not just familiarity with the room, it's also familiarity with how the generator works where it's going to place things, how many things you found in any specific area. So there's a lot that goes into it to give a lot of variation in runtime for these. Definitely. And we're talking also about some of the, some of the meanest settings. We're talking about seven zone large, talking with hazards. It, uh, it definitely has an impact. Definitely does. There's just so many rooms. I think it's the, uh, the total number of screens was 500 and some. It's, it's a substantial number. I mean, a substantial part of that's the mountain, but... Oh, yeah. These have a specific individual rooms as well. There, there are a couple... There's, like, I want to say 150 rooms, something like that. Even... I'd go check, but I don't know if I can leave this uh, mission report screen. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, I wouldn't worry about checking right now. Um, if you would like that, you can also run, have that run through the route for you, so you can kind of see what your route was. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Be a fun little, little execution to show one of some of the uh, end game features of this as well. Once you've finished a, a seed, it will allow you to run through every move you made through the process. So it follows what, what square you were on, what stuff you picked up when. So you have a, a full recounting of how the seed went. And you can see like there are moments where there was some confusion set in where you're just checking the same room a couple times trying to figure something out. And uh, sometimes it clicks. This is really, that's the moment where you got really far ahead with finding that bomb so quickly. I really think that's the, that's like the locus of, of really getting through this as fast as possible. Yeah. Because you were able to get you were able to get bomb and morph without passing by those rooms at all. 
which allows you to get sensor right away, which gave you that sort of extra edge. I, for the most part, I didn't fully need sensor. I was familiar with the vast majority of these rooms, but it definitely there was a couple where it definitely did help. Oh yeah, and a lot of those are, are rooms where it explicitly doesn't have breakable blocks that are visible, but it has something like uh, a, a room transition where you can see there's just sort of going to be another room on the other side, even if it isn't clear, you can go through like a, uh, a set of blocks that may not be corporeal, but won't show that they're not corporeal. And those sorts of things. So it looks like, uh, it looks like Kat just found Spazer, which is excellent for her. Um, so she's got, she's got long beam, oh no, did she find Spazer? It was Elia that found Spazer, rather. My mistake. So yeah, Cat still needs Phaser, Cat still needs Wave, um, and she needs to pick up Screw Attack. So hopefully she'll make her way back to Kraid uh, and deal with that relatively soon. Um, I, I think at the moment right now she's thinking, I gotta find that Maria suit. I gotta figure out where that is, and I've gotta push forward into getting it so that Ridley is a little more traversable. Unfortunately, uh, Ridley is where that suit is. Yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult for for her to find her way through some of this. Um, I will say though, you you definitely handled that that run out of Torian very very well. Um, I didn't take two attempts, but I, it was a lot lot shorter on time than you were by the time you got to the end of it. That room specifically with the uh, falling through the floor, taking the elevators back up, mm. kind of mean. The the obstacle course isn't that bad when you've been through it a couple times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely. If you, especially if you haven't seen it before, that room can be very intimidating. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And we're talking about the number of rooms that are available for this particular generation. I believe our Brelia had something like 10,000 plus rooms. There are a lot of rooms. Ah, Elia just found her bombs. That's fantastic. She can start doing some more progression work with that. It's going to help her uh, get further in. And that's one of the big blockers, mm -hmm. really, is for, for getting any major progress through this. Um, I mean, I've had, she's, she's... I've had bombs not required seeds. That does happen every once in a blue moon. Uh, but today is not that. <laughs> Yeah, in, in this particular seed, bombs were incredibly important for a few things, um, just keeping you out of certain places. Um, and it's, it's just getting through some of that to, yeah, make way. And again, I think I think Kat right now is, is very much of the mindset that Varia is probably further out. It's somewhere hidden some one of the other areas, and there's just so many things to check as well. Um, I am happy to see that we didn't get the terrible version of this room that Kat's in right now. Um, there are a lot of versions of that room. I was talking specifically about the one that's a 16 by 16 grid. Or, sorry, sorry, you... uh, 4 by 4. But you're okay. not aware of the 5 by 5 version, are you? No, never seen the 5 by 5, didn't know There's it was a, a thing, five and five now I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have an immense amount of respect for those rooms, since they were made before the copy-paste tool was a thing, but... Oh, really? So those were all hand-drawn? Those were all handmade. Oh, that is, that's, ooh. Alright, so, to give some context, uh, the map generator, the map maker in this hat, rather, has a copy-paste tool now where you can grab a thing, just sort of grab it, move it, copy it, paste it. It'll apply all of the same file sets. You still have to redraw certain aspects of it, but you can easily move and mirror and drop things. Uh, that room has, the, the one we're talking about, the 4x4 room, has 16 versions of that particular Teresa room. Uh, all of which are flipped or moved, all have special paths between them, uh, making traversing it very difficult, and it has three items that can be majors. So, you end up having to go through all of these, slowly digging your way through, uh, and all of the bomb blocks are single bomb, they don't chain through, so it takes a while to get through. Looks like Elia is back in Brinstar, and that's a really good thing. If uh, she does find the path through there that leads to Spring Ball, that could give her another distinct edge towards this and help her help get her back on track for for finding some of these things. Uh, looks like she's also looking for the she's looking for the Ridley room clearly, or was looking for the Ridley room. Yeah, next time, time Cactus so map charges. Ridley location. Oh, was. <laughs> the Ridley location was actually really mean this seed. If you weren't familiar oh, yeah, being... with the room. Yeah, being on the top of that room. Um, mm -hmm. I had I had sensor and I saw it. I'm like, there has to be a way through that room. That is a, an example of the sensor not being able to tell you exactly what's wrong with the room. 
uh, the blocks that allow you to go up are just non-corporeal. So you can't actually uh, see that those are fake blocks, essentially. Uh, so it just leaves you guessing, like, how am I supposed to do this room transition up? My initial thought was there was an elevator somewhere, and I was I was incorrect. I was able to find it eventually, but it took a little bit of time. And there we go. It looks like Cat has found Spazer at this point. Uh, I do not believe I found Spazer in my run through. I'm pretty sure I missed that entirely. I stopped looking at Wreck Ship as soon as I uh, as soon as I got bombs. I do know the room that Spazer's in has actually been updated since this iteration of it to make it oh. a little more clear that there's something back there. Uh, okay, so there's some type of visual indicator. Mm -hmm. There's a, a well, I mean, yeah. there is a visual indicator in that version, but there's a there's a better visual indicator in the new version. Yeah, and I noticed um, early on there were people struggling with the the purple bridge room, one of the earlier rooms as well, um, where we found high jump boots. boots. Yep, and the whole the the issue there being that there is a visual indicator, and it is the fact that there is a gleamer beneath the floor. It's mm -hmm. the only indicator that there's something down there, and it's not always there. Mm -hmm. so My issue little, with that room is I was so focused on trying to get up that I didn't even look down. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it took, me, uh, it took me a good, like, five or ten minutes to figure out that I was supposed to shoot the floor out down there. Yeah. I, hurting me in particular with that room is I've seen that room before, but I hadn't found that secret in that room before. So I had, oh. like, yes, I know this room, I trust this room, I don't need to shoot every single floor and ceiling, because I know this room, and there's no secret in this room, right? <laughs> that is one of the fun part. The fun parts of this game is that there are so many things to find and so many things to do. You might think you know something, and then you're completely floored by it, and surprised by it. Oh, it looks like the Cindy Lauper Memorial Bridge has been found. Um, this is a uh, reference. If anyone's ever played Goonies 2, this is a map that was recreated from that. Uh, there's a bridge area where there are things that like feel your boomerang, and there's a bomb spot and all of that. So. In this case, it's just a little bit of fluff, and the crystal core is there. Crystal core is an interesting core, but in this case, uh, actually, um, I've talked with Cat about this in the past, and we've just casually been talking about this. Crystal core can can be used as a substitute for not having Varia. Um, it's something I've, I've done multiple times. Alternatively, not having Varia can be a substitute for not having Varia in my case, but... <laughs> Yeah, you just soldiered through it. Um, that was like I said, distinctly impressive that you were able to get through it that quickly. I I don't know how I managed to make that work. I didn't even have that much. I didn't have that many E tanks even. Yeah, you were able to get through it. I mean, you just you you found the found the Ridley spot. Um, uh, unfortunately, this is also going to be missiles. I I know Cat loves exploring Rex ship, but at this point, there are no answers to be found there. Wreck Chip already had its one important thing for the seed. Yep, and that's that's about what you can expect out of Wreck Chip. It's uh, being a later generation map. It's just one of those things where you're not going to find a lot of a lot of stuff there. It really is unfortunate. Yeah, and I mean, once it once they implement some type of uh, additional incentive for going there, maybe a boss fight, maybe something else, that'll that'll change the dynamic there a little bit. But for the moment, it really just turns into a. This says that one weird check you're not necessarily going to find somewhere else. It's, uh, yeah. I do have a they, uh, little bit of insider information that there is a Fantoon texture in the game files. Oh. Well, there we go. That I am excited for. Fantoon would make a great addition to this game. I, I don't think we're going to be getting it anytime soon. Having spoken to Vacant Shade, the developer, uh, he's currently focused on just optimizing the back end. Uh, because the collision system was programmed all the way back in 1.0, and it's rapidly becoming very inefficient. Aha, uh -huh. that makes sense. I'm assuming there's also going to be some improvements to map generation as well. I know that there are sometimes issues where the map generation tends to fail. It iterates over many, many times, especially if you're using limited room sets. I mean... I mean, he, a, I know a generator rework is on his to-do list. I don't think it's on his to-do list for the next update in particular. I know Fantoon's also not for the next update. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, this is a, like, this is a living, breathing project. We're going to see a lot more smaller updates flow over time. Um, there is a Metroid Planets community. Uh, if you're interested in looking for it, you can find it from the uh, Metroid Planets uh, page on uh, Metroid Construction. 
Uh, there's uh, yeah, Discord server houses uh, races every every Friday. It has uh, a whole archive of room libraries where you can get all the things you you want to to play the game. So yeah, absolutely fantastic community. Good place to uh, learn more about this. And if you're interested in doing more runs, that's the best place to go. Minor correction: uh, races Fridays and Tuesdays and Sundays. I was incorrect about that. Yes, yeah, so the multiple races per week always good to know. Although the the Sunday right. ones aren't always very beginner friendly. If you're yeah, if you want beginner friendly races, show up on Friday. Don't show up on Sunday. <laughs> and the community as a whole is pretty embracing of new people. Obviously, expanding out the game, making it more accessible, is something that a lot of folks in that server want. Definitely. Speaking of so, communities, can I jump in with a quick message? Sure thing. Yeah, Randomania has been in existence since 2017. It's been our mission to showcase as many randomizers as we can and bring them to people that have yet to enjoy them. That includes me. I'm quite new to randomizers. I've been enjoying this. And, of course, we've chosen NAMI as the charity of choice for donation-based marathons, which is the amazing work they've done to give hope to the struggling, and in part because many of the Randomania staff and administration have been touched by mental health and illness throughout their lives. Uh, and it's an incredible cause that we are supporting uh, and something that affects so many people so if you're able to exclamation mark donate in chat any amount uh, helps we do have those two bid wars closing very soon for resident evil remake the door versus lock randomizer and as well as jill's outfit uh, it takes very little most of those can easily be sniped by just a couple of dollars so if you want to change the impact of those you can do that right now with a donation Oh, it's lovely. I've loved you have incentives like that. You're uh, getting getting some bang for your buck and helping a wonderful cause in the process. Right, so it looks like we're we're doing more of the turning around looking for stuff. Uh, Cat's still exploring more of wrecked ship uh, in the hopes of finding. Again, I'm I'm reasonably convinced she's convinced that way being that way being that uh, Mari is there somewhere. Um, it's easy for that to happen. You're looking for uh, whatever edge you can get. Uh, in this case, Kat is also doing a full exploration of a, a mirror room, as it were. Um, I'm not sure who designed those rooms, but the idea is the, the one side of the room mirrors what is actually on a completely impossible to read side of the room. Which is a fun little puzzle challenge. <laughs> so, right now we're looking at, looks like Elia is working her way through more Brinstar now, uh, which is fantastic. More stuff to find, more things to work through. Um, and ideally, she will find uh, Spore Spawn relatively quickly. Uh, which should be defeatable with her current equipment. And that will also give access then to Kraid, which is important. So if she finds Spore Spawn, uh, it'll take her straight into Kraid, where she should be able to find the boss, possibly yeah, jump ahead in that regard. I believe Cat still needs to finish Kraid and Ridley. So she's currently also back in Brinstar looking for uh, either some type of progression item or the boss. Um, at some point, I suspect the cat's just going to say uh, she's done looking for her Varya suit and just go for fighting bosses. It looks like uh, Elia has found her way to runes to, uh, to Spore Spawn. So we'll see that fight carry out. I will comment on the screw attack location. I, I have since... And by since, I mean literally last night, I went into the editor and I made it a little bit easier to tell that that wall isn't real. <laughs> yeah, I haven't the released I... that update yet, but I, I have, I, that is a change that I'm making for the next update to my set of rooms. <laughs> yeah, the only reason I even knew that it was there was because I had sensor on at the time, um, just because it's such a useful kind of setup. It is a completely different style of wall from the other walls in the room. Mm -hmm. So it is, there's a visual indicator, it's just not necessarily as clear as you'd want it to be. Uh, I do love the idea that Spore Spawn in this seed directly gates uh, Kraid. means that it's impossible to miss Spore Spawn. What's to Great's Torian in this seed? Oh, I'm sorry, Torian. I, my mistake. Wrong elevator, that's my job. <laughs> But yeah, we were, uh, I, I do love the fact that there is a direct gating towards an endgame area that Spore Spawn blocks. That way it is literally just, I'm going to go there and you find it along the way. 
that it, it prevents the the angel thing of I forget that this thing exists mm -hmm. and then you get to the end like why can't I open the mother brain's door? That that would have happened to me if <laughs> the seed had been a little less nice. I'll say I think I think it's happened to all of us at some point where we just we just get that tunnel vision. You're looking for yep. fastest way through the seed and you think okay I've got the two I've got the two. There were only two bosses in the the original game aside from mother brain. We got the two. Why, why can't I go any further? It's like, oh, that's right, it's four spawn. <laughs> One of those bosses you don't, you don't really see a lot of in Super Metroid either, especially if you're talking about the randomizer community. Obviously, casual playthrough, I expect you're going to go through that. You're not going to know how to bypass that. But in the randomizer community, it is incredibly rare to see anyone fight four spawn directly. Definitely. I don't even know it's when the last time I fought this. Spore spawn and Super Metroid. Actually, I did have a Super Metroid randomizer that forced me to fight Spore spawn that not that long ago. Yeah, it's it's not a common occurrence. It's, it's equivalent to like um if you've played the Link to the Past, uh it's like a pedestal seed where you've got to unlock the pedestal to find some type of progression item. It's just that kind of rarity where you just don't expect it. <sighs> yeah. So uh, hopefully we will see some uh, some additional progress out of this. Um. Right now, again, uh, finding Torian, it's always a good idea when you find Torian to try and explore Torian at least a little bit. Uh, that gives you a little bit of an advantage, uh, especially if you can find some type of progression item, because progression items can be there. It's uh, one of those things where in vanilla it's just not a thing that happens, but in this particular game it is entirely possible. That is, yeah. <laughs> I, I was kind of thinking Spring Ball might be in Torian, just because for some reason that just happens in seeds I play a disproportionately frequent amount of times. <laughs> uh, before I learned that you could get items in Thorian, uh, I made the mistake of <laughs> specifically not checking it, thinking, oh, there can't be anything there. And my Varia suit was in there, and that's what made the difference. So it's like, it? you need to be aware of and careful about that. Oh, that's unfortunate seeing our Borelli get taken out by oh. a handful of Metroids. That it is unfortunate. Deeply unfortunate. We've all kind of seen that. Ah, and we see cats using the, using the uh, crystal core uh, to bypass the uh, the requirements for uh, for hazards. Um, oh, no, it's long happened? vault. <laughs> I have never seen long vault before, and that is hilarious. Yeah. So to to give context of how crystal core works, um, what crystal core does is it every time you drop to zero health, it burns a missile and gives you five health. Um, thus effectively making it that you've got 5 health for every missile. If you've got 225 missiles, that's a lot of health. That's multiple, that's that's 10 E-Tanks worth of health. So it gives you a the, lot more time. In the racing community, we sometimes call it Varia Suit at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's exactly what it is, Varia Suit at home. It's not quite Varia Suit. It's not even that close to Varia Suit, but it works. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully Crystal Core is going to carry Cat through this. Um, I think that she's just kind of hit that frustration point looking for for Varia suit where it's like I gotta wrap this up. Let's go look for it. Let's go. Let's go try and take care of these bosses. Crystal Coral's advice. Oh no. Um, if she's... if Cat does find Screw Attack, then that's definitely clearable that way. If not, I think she's going to run into a lot of problems trying to clear those bosses. At least she has Crystal Core. <laughs> yeah, El Ellie at this point is uh, definitely going to have some problems uh, getting through some of this. Hopefully she'll be able to, uh, she'll, be, she'll back off, she'll start looking at other places, try to figure out where her next, her next actual beneficial item is going to be. Torian at this point is kind of a lost cause. Um, she could try and force her way to finding Wave Beam, and that might give a slight advantage in certain places, but for the moment, it's really not going to give any kind of logical advantage for finding checks. And now Cat is playing the fun game of figuring out what switches to press. <laughs> There's actually two correct um, combinations for this room. Oh, really? I, I designed it for... I think I designed it for 1-3 to be the correct combo, uh, but apparently 2-4 works as well. Oh, apparently that like... also- apparently 1-5-4 also works. <laughs> Interesting. 
It, so I kind of just. It's a little more forgiving. I connected the buttons to the gates randomly and then just made sure there was at least one possible way to solve it. Eh, it looks like Kat has made her way through this. Um, she's unfortunately not going to find Screw Attack. Um, that is a little disappointing, but I'm sure she'll be able to manage without it. Again, Screw Attack is not necessary for clearing these seeds, it just makes things, or certainly makes things easier. Neither is Spazer. Yep. Although, about that, there, there's, I've got some more insider news. <laughs> oh, feel free that, to share if you are, if you are able. I don't have, like, a ton of specifics, but it has been said by Vacant that he is making a Spazer-related object that will make it a logical requirement, and not just that item you're disappointed to see because it wasn't something else. <laughs> Well, I mean, if I mean, if you're trying to keep in the spirit of Super Metroid, Spazer being in there and being disappointing is definitely on on brand. <laughs> but it's like, oh, I, well, I, it's, it's Spazer, it's Spazer is plasma at home, essentially. True. I don't know exactly what it is, but I've been told think something adjacent to the charge Spazer blocks from Dread. Oh, very cool. That is something, that is fantastic. Something in that general ballpark. Of an object. I would love to see charge added at some point, but I, I'm not hopeful for it. I I wouldn't I wouldn't complain either way whether we do or don't get charge. Like, I'd be happy to see it, but like I'm not gonna campaign because I don't feel like it's really missing. Yeah, it's not something that you need to have in there. It's just sort of like an extra. This could be fun. I could see it being a core. Like that could be something that could be fun. Oh, I see. <laughs> Elia's found my fake yellow door. <laughs> Your, the fake yellow door. Yeah, I, I saw the theater and like that's that's kind of special in a really fun way. <laughs> but yeah, so dead ends like this, especially having some kind of like indicator, like oh there there should be something over there, but it's something fake like that. Pretty common. Uh, I kind of explained the idea of uh, one by one Terminator rooms earlier in this, where uh, this is basically just one of those. It's a one by one Terminator uh, that gives the illusion for half a second that you found the boss door before you realize it's not a real door. <laughs> I the that room actually has quite the story to it. Uh, if you'd like to share, feel free. <laughs> I mean, like all of my room, you've probably noticed a couple of these rooms. The name is just a date, and those are me effectively making a room to tribute the race that happened on that day. And what happened with that one? is it's based off of a room by Gorodor, which is itself a remake of a fusion room that's, I think, like, S4 yellow door. And it actually had the yellow door. <laughs> and that was just such an iconic moment that I had to make it into a room, and now that room exists. <laughs> that's fantastic. I mean, we all love community and jokes, and that's something you see a lot of with this, this uh, particular game. There's a lot of, like things that the community finds that they find interesting or funny. Um, I mentioned the idea of, like, the vault, the vault way, um, those sorts of things. Um, specifically, we're talking about Flannel Cat, uh, her Four Corners room that's now been been done, like, seven different ways. So far. <laughs> there will be more. There will always I, be more. I can confirm there's at least one more on the way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, there's like, uh, yeah, and, and one, of the, one of the fun parts about this sort of design for the game is that if a community has a joke, it can, they can just run with it. And, like, it gets more refined as things go, and it becomes part of the, the DNA of, of this game. Like, finding uh, finding a, a vault way doesn't seem like it's a foreign idea to me, but it, at the time it was made, it was sort of making fun of the idea of the high security vault and all the other things. Actually, the high security vault came after. Yep. Yeah. Came after the, vault. Uh, the, okay. about that. the original is Bling Vault by Skyhawk. The dollar sign and the... Mm -hmm. Yeah. The high security vault was just my take on the matter. And then there's the low security vault, which is, I think, my favorite. There's also no security vault that I made. Which is just no door. It, it's just high security vault, but the door's open. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could go in there and close the door on yourself if you want, but... <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it'd be a lot of work for, a lot of work for nothing. <laughs> you, you can do that. I, I didn't change the room. I literally just copied the room and just went into the gate and said, open. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like Kat is on her way back to Norfair, so I'm guessing she's probably going to dive more of Ridley at this point. Uh, Crystal Core Equip, definitely a good call. Um, and Ridley, 
the Ridley fight itself, um, I don't remember which Ridley fight this was, but I know that it wasn't something that was particularly difficult. I... I can't actually remember off the top of my head what the room was called either, but... It... Oh... oh no, I remember I had miss. 40 health left by the end of it, because it was heated, but... There it is. Cat just revealed the location of her boss fight room, so she knows that it knows exactly where Ridley is, and that's gonna give her the edge. She also knows where Torian is, so really, it's just gonna be a matter of clearing out that that Ridley spot and then going for Mother Brain. Also, I didn't even realize there was a bomb spot down there. Oh, huh. I didn't realize there was a bomb spot down there. <laughs> Interesting. The, the more this, you is, know. this is my first time seeing that room. But <laughs> yeah, I, I liken it. It's sort of got that reminiscent feel of Yoku blocks from uh, from Mega Man. I was actually thinking uh, Mario Galaxy Space Junk Galaxy when I saw them. That's actually way more accurate now that I think about it. You're right. <laughs> was the appearing and disappearing thing made me think of this? But yeah, that's mm. yeah, definitely that like timer of slopping back and forth, <laughs> uh, which they carried over into uh, what was it Mario 3D Land and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. That is an unfortunate situation Ilya has gotten herself into. Oof. Yep. So I think uh, she's she's still exploring Tori and trying to figure out what's there, if anything, to, to get. And I think this is, yeah, she's pulling back, thinking, I gotta go somewhere else. I gotta figure out what to do. That's not digging into Tori right now. I will admit, with my run, I was thinking if I... If I die to brain or die before brain i'm probably just going to leave and go find an e-tank and then come back <laughs> uh thankfully for me that didn't happen but <laughs> yeah well i saw you were you were on the, you were almost there um and you, you died right in the room before the door like in the room that had the gold <laughs> door in it and didn't see it i'm like oh this is i don't know if she's gonna dive back in and you did which is obviously uh, a good call I, I knew I took a lot of damage in that room Elia just died in, fighting the Metroids. You figured if you could, if you could maximize I figured, that. Yeah. yeah. I figured if I'm not wasting a bunch of time getting clobbered by the electricity, then I'm probably going to have enough health. Which makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so hopefully, hopefully someone's going to find Varya's suit. I, I hope it wasn't hidden that well that nobody finds it. I kind of want to go back into the seed and look for it. It's it's in Ridley, I'll say that much. I mean, uh, I don't need you to a... say that, I can scroll down and see that. Well, yeah, it's still. <laughs> the point is, it's in Ridley, it's uh, hidden in a place that's really not that hard to find, you just gotta look for it. That think is it was, an uh... interesting generation order. Yeah, uh, that's, why, that's why I thought this scene was a lot of fun, it's very different. High jumping the first item, getting space jump before morph ball, like that's... Very different from what you usually see in these generations. Yeah. <laughs> Getting bombs fact, before Morph Ball? <laughs> yeah. Definitely an interesting uh, kind of thing. I did that and I'm like, okay. I don't <laughs> think this is how this is supposed to work. <laughs> yeah, I called that at the, the moment that I saw it. I was like, oh, yeah, you found, you found bombs and you just can't use them. <laughs> It's uh, very, very rare when that kind of thing happens, but it does happen. Uh, like, Morph Ball is in one of those spots Spring where... Ball. Yeah. Morph Ball is just in one of those spots where it's like, uh, it's not the easiest thing to get to. If you don't know the room, you, you don't want to spend so much time devoted to shooting every single block. Uh, I do like that this does have that indication there of... It does uh, have indication. A, a, a Nova climbing through the, the ceiling. I never noticed that. I, I'm too bloodthirsty. I kept killing the enemies before they could tell me that there was a secret up there. <laughs> All right, so Cat is now entering uh, entering the Ridley room, um, swapping over Crystal Core to make sure she can survive through it. Um, looks like this this version of Ridley. So Ridley is not a challenge in this game. Um, there's nothing stopping you from just pumping missiles directly into him. He stuns every time he gets hit. He doesn't have the same kind of projectile patterns that Kraid has and the blocking that Kraid's projectiles do. So Ridley in this is very much a straightforward, I'm going to go shoot this thing and it'll be done. Um, yeah, so it looks like Kat is now on her way to Torian. Uh, without finding uh, Varya. 
This is an exceptionally rude generation order. Yep. Wants you to go to Norfair, then to Wreckchip, then to Brinstar, then to Ridley, then to Torian, actually, then to Kraid, then back to Torian. Well, I mean, I think it always forces Screw to be last, right? No. No? Uh, not in not in Chaotic Progression Seeds, which I'm guessing this is based on the fact yes. that Morph Ball was not the first item, and Longbeam is like the third last item. Yeah, the Chaotic Progression really does make this difficult, and that's why you're... You see stuff like the bomb being available before Morph Ball. Um, it's just that kind of very intense mix of things. And uh, I'm kind of shocked, actually, that it was this play. Like, it, the Chaotic Seeds can be very, very difficult because of that. It entirely... I mean, I had one seed where I, I ran and I put Chaotic on, and it just said, uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it just gave me Morph Ball and Long Beam right away anyway. <laughs> Well, I mean, you look at this, uh, the, the beam weapons were kind of just sort of off on their own. It's, it's possible to miss all of them, really. Uh, not ice beam. You uh, kind of need ice beam. Uh, not, not ice beam. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's unless you... Very actually, no, you do long. actually require ice beam this seed, because there was the Metroid combat room. Yeah, but, I mean, as far as uh, missing long, missing wave... Oh, no, you, you need wave to get through as well, but that's, like, right at the end. Uh, Did I need but wave? But you can miss long and miss phaser. I believe that the robots blocking uh, blocking off the path to Mother Brain require wave. I'm gonna be real. I don't remember Torian anymore. <laughs> yeah, there's that uh, the room that has like the the robots that are partially buried in the floor, and wave beam breaks the block below them. I don't think that wasn't so. on the way to the brain though. Oh, I might be, I might be wrong. Uh, it might not have been required, but that was off yeah, the elevator. In the end, there's there's also one other thing that might prevent our runners from thinking they should try and do Mother Brain right away without all the items. There are check rooms for basically everything. If, uh, for example, you get stuck in a room where you, you need Wave Beam to get through, if you haven't picked that up on the way out, that's over. You gotta start back again and take out Mother Brain again. That is true. It is awful when that happens. Um, I've had that happen multiple times with Spring Ball, where it's like, the seed itself, I could do all of the other can fly kind of stuff of using bombs, but doesn't really matter if uh, there's a spring check there and it's one of the one of the nastier ones that specifically goes out of its way to make itself difficult uh, with that spring. I, I've made a, a several of those. <laughs> yeah, those spring checks can be very difficult and like the, some of the ones you run into early in this one where it's just two blocks or it's just three blocks, you can easily cheese through those with bombs. But when it comes to the longer ones that require you to constantly rebound off the ceiling to not fall through, those checks really are a lot harder to, to get through. Apparently, there is actually a way to do infinitely long, provided you have exactly a more fall-sized gap under the spring block. Apparently. I don't know how to do this, but <laughs> I know yeah, it's I, a thing. Is, it's like with any game that people speedrun and run fast, There, you're never going to get a game that doesn't have glitches or have unintended behavior, and there are people who are going to find it. I mean that's the the core of our uh, our of, of speedrunning is just finding those things that the dev never intended or that were just not how mechanics were intended. I'm just I only had 36 percent of the items. Wow. Yeah, um, Cat has been just everywhere looking for stuff, and I think uh, the the drive to find Varia was really strong, and it's just sort of a yeah, you know, well, what now kind of thing. It's actually a really warm Brinstar. You don't usually see a lot of heated rooms in Brinstar. Yeah, there, there were a lot of hazard rooms in this. Uh, it did give you a lot of health early on, which is why I think that it was it was likely to spawn so many. Yeah. I, th I think the way the generator works, it's actually more accurate to say it the other way around. Oh. I'm pretty sure it places rooms and then items. Oh. So it, it, it put a lot of heated rooms in and then saw, oh, I need to give them a lot of help. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I think. I uh, might, I think sometimes it places, it, like, it'll place a couple rooms, then some items, then a couple rooms, then a couple items. It could be, yeah, that kind of generated kind of design. Yeah. I, I've played enough of this game that I have a generally pretty good idea of what the generator likes to do. There's, there's a couple rooms that the generator absolutely loves that I think I said to Ilya, you need to turn off this room because it will show up and take like 20 minutes. 
Oh yeah, I mean that's that's one of those big things. I mean there are the TGIF rooms. If you wanna give some context into those. Oh boy, those those rooms. <laughs> The, the TGIF tag, uh, we've excluded them in this race because we, we, we don't hate ourselves that much. <laughs> uh, but they're basically rooms that are that are either long or unintuitive or just annoying. So, so big doesn't necessarily equal TGIF, but if it's any, basically, if it's a room that you think is annoying every time you see it, such as I think Hallwayception actually does now. I think Hallwayception does, and Elia is missing an update from this author. I couldn't say off the top of my head without checking. Mm -hmm. uh, but any just big, time consuming, or otherwise annoying rooms get tagged with TGIF, and we den generally turn them off. Uh, that tag is also why I say don't show up to Sunday races if you are inexperienced, because that's when we have them on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you have a, a relatively infamous uh, room with that oh, tag boy. on. Uh, one that, we, that I ran into in uh, another run oh. of Metro Plants I was doing for a different <laughs> marathon. Uh, oh, no, that wasn't a marathon. That was a personal stream. Either way. Uh, a room that is uh, an eight-minute long room of going through pipe. <laughs> through I... through this, this more fall pipe. Yeah, it, it's eight minutes of more fall pipe. And uh, let's just say I added the shortcut for a reason. <laughs> the The first time it showed up, or at least the first time I experienced it, I uh, was in a race. And, uh, well, the shortcut didn't exist yet. You had to go through it three times, unless you had Varia the first time through, which only one person did. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, uh, I managed to get break out of it a little bit early uh, using Wave Beam, Long Wave. Yep, I, I did notice that that's a thing. That wasn't intentional, but I noticed that I'm like, you know what, you guys deserve some sort of mercy if this room spawned. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it looks like Kat is really just rushing as, as fast as she can to try and find that Mother Brain room. Once she finds it, I'm sure she'll get through it pretty quick. Um, it's just a matter of getting to that last little section. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see uh, how this how this turns out. Um, yeah, but other than that, I mean, we've, like I said, the community is very open to, uh, you know, doing a lot of different race stuff. It's, it's very, very welcoming and open community. Very. Yeah. So, again, we're, we're mostly just waiting for Kat to find, uh, find Mother Brain, and Ellie is currently working on finding her way through, uh, through Ridley. Um, again, the, the hazard runs in this were pretty excessive and pretty hard, but I think that's, uh, what people, what people paid for. Definitely. God, when I was, I still remember when I was going through Ridley, I was just thinking I probably shouldn't be doing this, but on the other hand, content. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was definitely one of those things where you took so many risks, and and that is really just. Um, I think that's that's one of the reasons you had a lot of really big payoff for a lot of really hard risks that you took. Yeah. You, you don't uh, get as high up on this game's uh, race time leaderboard as I am without taking a lot of very big risks and having a lot of ridiculous luck. <laughs> yeah, you take those swings if you get them, uh, and that's that's the core of all racing for randomizers. I think we've seen that several times. I mean, it is it is deeply impressive to watch some of the racers from, from yesterday's FF6 run. They all finish within minutes of each other. Um, whereas, I mean, there are some of these races where there is just that level of, of variability to it, where you can see a lot of, um, yeah, you can see there is, there's going to be substantial variability. I mean, case and in like point, a, look at my time. Yeah, and, and you look at some of the other randomizers, specifically RPG randomizers, uh, if you're Final Fantasy IV, or you're talking about, um, so like Earthbound, for example, all of those are very much sequential discovery kind of solutions. Uh, this is somewhat like that, but not quite. Sometimes it is. It looks, it looks like Kat has found love the Mother Brain Room. Um, Ilya defeated Ridley. Ilya just finished Ridley, that's fantastic. So Ilya is, um, I believe at this point... Ooh, Kat needs to be careful. Oh, well, she has she has Crystal. Kat but has Crystal, I would still she's be fine. Very careful with this. Uh, you burn through a lot of missiles at the end here. Um, yeah. There are a lot of... Um, just an that is a ton. very bold decision, Kat. <laughs> That, this is this is the cat we know and love, uh, making <laughs> the boldest of decisions. 
Uh, okay, so Cat still has 300 missiles, and that's, again, that's, uh, uh, sorry, 130 missiles, and that's 130 hits, essentially. Um, uh, provided that that's going to go down, though, substantially as uh, Zebed heads are cleared, as other things are cleared out. So, uh, we might see Cat farm some Rinkas. Um, and there's some, there's some health back. That's always a good thing. Um, again, Rinka farming is kind of a, a tried and true thing that happens in, in this area. Like, especially, you go through a, a hard fight like that where, you know, you're really low on health. And Cat was obviously taking some, some liberties to be a little more aggressive for time. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always interesting to see these sorts of things. And, uh, on the path out, Cat is likely to be able to survive this with Crystal. Um, Crystal is actually more beneficial here than having Varya suit by a pretty substantial margin. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there's no heated rooms in this escape. Yep, which is a huge, huge benefit. There can I be was... heated rooms. I was so worried about that. Be... I had four health after that spring guess, ball I'm... room. Yeah, seeing so you go through spring ball room like that, uh, that was definitely one of those harrowing moments of like, well, I've got 75 health. If I hit a heated room, I'm probably not going to make it, but I gotta try. <laughs> I, I was worried about time, just seeing how long big the escape timer was. At that point, I had completely forgotten about the obstacle course, which is known for <laughs> adding a very large amount of time to the escape timer. Oh, I did not know you could yeah. do that. Congratulations, Cat. You, well, you're, you're in you're in the it. box. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, obstacle course adds an incredible amount of time to this. Um, so it's one of the one of the basically one of the big space jump checks, essentially. I do actually have a little bit of insight as to how the escape timer is calculated. Oh, that's always good to know. Uh, for the mo obvious, some of the obvious things, like the more screens in the escape, the l bit l larger the timer is, for obvious reasons. Uh, however, that includes the entire Mother Brain room, regardless of where Brain actually is in the room, because the generator uh... doesn't know that. And it might have a situation like we did today, where Brain is right at the front of the room, and then there's a ton more room after it. So Makes just sense. in case that happens, the entire Brain room is counted in the escape timer. Uh, I believe every Zebatite adds a bunch. Uh, every Lift adds a bunch. Cat is just finishing up this last little escape area. Um, looking at the map, actually, she could have used that, uh, that Rinka to prop herself up a little bit, but... Oh. Alright. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're... She should be out momentarily. We're gonna see Cat finish up this, this seed quite quickly. She's gonna hit that last little bit there. Um, so hopefully, um, see that sort of, uh, finish up right now. I think she's in the last, uh, last five or six rooms. Not even. Um. Not even. She's got this. As yeah. long as she doesn't get grabbed by a Metroid, she's fine. Yep, this is the last little section here. I'm gonna pop right down, and, uh, yeah. Out this door, as soon as she goes through here, she will be in the room with the elevator, and, uh, that will be time on Cat. Definitely one of the, uh, one of the meaner seats we've drawn and sort of, uh, Difficult kind of uh, kind of seed to run through, and uh, y'all handled it very, very valiantly. Uh, given that it's just, it's got so many little, little tricks, little hidden things, and that's time on cat. Congrats, cat! You did it. Yep. Oh, she can't hear us yet, uh, but yep, sure she'll be pulled up momentarily. Trying to you know, get that conversation on. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, excellent race, a lot of fun to watch. Um, if you're interested in hello. seeing more of the Metroid Plant... Oh, hello, Cat! Welcome oh, to I didn't mean chat. to interrupt you, my bad. What, um... Oh, no, no, no. go right I guess I might have just made every right choice ever, but oh my god, that seed. <laughs> Jesus. Hello. Yep, that's... Oh my gosh. Amada, I assume you finished, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, a crazy. while ago. <laughs> GG, uh, oh I, my gosh. I had co commentary for the last hour. <laughs> that's that's great. Where, where I I see none of us got the 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 suit. Where was it? Do you Allegedly, have it's you? in Ridley. Very deeply in Ridley. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll just go right in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. There. 
Oh my gosh. Oh boy. I didn't even figure out the intended solution to the room called Grab the Ledge. It just came back in IBJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't come back in IBJ. I just did IBJ. <laughs> I also yeah. found Sorry. bombs before Morph. Sorry. I found more than bombs in a oh really short time. I'm like, oh, I'm doing so great. Long. I'm on fire. We should probably wrap this up and give some uh, some outro. So if uh, y'all want to uh, talk a little bit about yourselves, what you're currently doing. Yeah. Hey, thank you. I'm Flannel Cat, and I uh, I, lo I loved this seed. It was awful and nightmarish. If you like things like this and randomizers and whatever, that's what I do. But thank you for watching. And this was definitely one of the most unreasonable seeds I've ever played. So I'm going to go pass it off to anyone else now. All right, yeah, I'm Aurelia. I play a lot of randomizers. Uh, I sometimes play Metroid Planets better than this. Sometimes I don't. Um, I play, you know, a lot of Link to the Past randomizer. I play a lot of Pinball, which is not a randomizer, but is awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm Lami Amada. I, shocker, do a lot of randomizers. <laughs> <laughs> I play this game often. Pretty much always at the weekly community races. Uh, occasionally I play other games as well. Mostly other randomizers, but every every once in a blue moon, I'll do something that's not a randomizer. <laughs> but but I, I don't actually know where I was going with that. I don't know. I, I I'm I'm a bit of an airhead sometimes. And I've been uh, I'm great good girl. I do randomizer streaming a lot of it. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> oh. You all know where you can find me. Thank you all so much for that fantastic race, GG, all of you. Thank you, y'all. Thank you. Everyone stick around. We got more, more runs still to come. We'll be taking a very brief break.